these are exciting times, it's been a while, but Dark Table 3.6 has come out. I just finished playing around with it, so I wanted to make a video on it. In this video, I'll cover the highlights. My name is Rico Richardson. Thank you for watching. Let's go. There have been some big changes in Dark Table 3.6, and like I said, I'm going to show you which one. First, we're going to start in the light table menu because I'm going to show you all the differences that they've made over here. One of them is that when you go to add to library, you see that the UI has had an overhaul. Now, previously, you weren't able to see your thumbnails. However, in this version of Darktable, you can definitely can because you can now either individually select this eye icon to bring up the image or to click this top one to make sure that you see all the thumbnails of your images. Now you can ignore JPEG images or you can make sure that they are being shown. But since Darktable is a raw development program, I'm going to choose ignore JPEG images because I only want to edit my raw files. I've already imported my files, so I won't have to do that right here. Another thing you can do is you can now decrease or increase the size of this box. Now let's close that one. And another thing that they have changed is that right now you can change the way this looks without using shortcuts. You can just click here and that will change everything that you're seeing. So you can scroll through images more easily and we even have a enlarging option. So that's great and that makes it very, very easy to work on your images with. Now let's jump inside the dark room by selecting an image. Here's the image. And one of the things that they have changed is they've added this vector scope. And why is this vector scope great? It's great because it shows you the dominant colors in this image. And we see that it's green and it's in reds. And that has to do with the fact that the reds and the oranges are usually the skin tones of white people. And that's a great way to see if the skin tones are in order. So let's say you're having a portrait and you're editing the portrait and you want to see if the skin tones are perfectly on par with how they supposed to be. Then you can just take a look at the vector scope. So I'm very happy that they added this feature into Darktable. It's my favorite one together with this one because this one allows me to get a great white balance because all you need to do is make sure that the reds, the greens and the whites are on the same level. So in this case, the highlights of the red should be decreased a little bit. And then that way you'll have the perfectly white balance. So on to the next thing, which are shapes. So let's say we're going to use the exposure module I'm going to show you a mask. There are two things that have changed. The first thing is if I use this one, so the radial mask, previously, if you've used the lens correction, uh, this will be distorted. So it will be curved. And right now it's no longer the case. They fixed that option. So that's great. And another thing is it's way easier to change something in a mask. So if I have two masks and they are overlaying on each other, I can now decrease or increase or whatever you want to call it and move the masks around more easily than I could previously. So that's a great thing as well. And then the next module, because we're working with two people right here, I didn't edit anything in this image uh, on purpose, but let's say I want to blur out his face. I made a video, I'll link it up here on all the ways you can do this in Darktable, but right now there's a much easier way and that's with the sensorized module. So if I open that one up and I create a mask, so let's say I select or I make a mask around his face because I don't want him to be recognized in the image for some reason because he told me he doesn't want to be in a photo or whatever. I can now just increase the input blur radius or the pixelation radius. So you can do this regardless of any, you don't need to uh, do them all at once. But if you do it like this, and let's say we're going to decrease the mask by holding the shift and scrolling away from us to make sure that it fits the face more easily. There you go. So now his face has been blurred out. It doesn't look good, but it's a great way to do this to make people anonymous in Darktable. Now, another module that they've added is the Color Balance RGB. And that's my favorite module right now because that allows me to very easily change the colors of an image. So let's go back first and let's try this again. I'm going to activate this. I can shift the hue in the image. So that looks weird, obviously, but it's a great way to just 
uh, shift here, they added the global vibrance and this actually replaces the vibrance module. So if you increase this, the colors come more to life and if you decrease it, they become more dull. So usually you can either increase the saturation or increase some vibrance and it allows you to increase the contrast of an image and decrease the contrast to make it more soft, to change the histogram, there you go. And it lets you change the linear chroma grading, the perceptual saturation grading, and the perceptual brilliance grading. So here you go, it makes it more light. That actually looks pretty good. I'm very surprised with this. This is the global saturation. You can see it in the flowers especially, that the saturation of the pixels are way, way higher this way. Reset that. Let's go to four ways. And that's a great thing because right now you can just offset the image, see, and see what happens to the histogram. Or you can just lift the shadows a little bit. So you can crush them or you can lift them. And same goes for the highlights. So you can increase them or decrease them. And then we've got the power, which is overall, I think, if I'm not mistaken correctly. And then another way to use this module is for a split toning of your image or let's say an origin teal. Um, I won't go into depth, but let's say we want the shadows to be a little bit blue. We're going to increase the saturation of that. I'm going to make the highlights orange. There you go. Now we've got an orange and two look is very subtle, but it's definitely there. So this is a great way and you can mask it, but this is a great way to work on the colors of your image. And it's specifically designed to have all the color options in one module. Now another thing they did was add a new crop module and that module has been added late in the pixel pipe and that makes it possible to use crop parts of your image for source parts in the retouch module. So that's to retouch up a face if you have a portrait or there's something else in the image that you want to change. And then a new section has been added to the color orientation or the color calibration module. So color calibration and this one really, I'm not quite sure what it does, but we didn't have this option before calibrate with the color checker. And if I open that one up, I'm sure someone will make a dedicated video on this. If you open that one up, you see that we've got all of these colors and we can change the chart to a uh, data color spider check. And we can even optimize for neutral colors or for wait or for saturated colors or even skin and soil colors. And we can change the patch scale so we can increase it or decrease. But here's the thing I don't really understand. We've got three symbols. If I click this one, something is happening. If I click that one, something is happening as well. It's probably reading the profile data. And then I select this checkbox, but then this happens. So I don't know what this is. Hopefully someone can explain in the comment section. There are a lot of people that know a lot more about Darktable when it comes to the technical side. I couldn't really figure this one out. Maybe I'll make a dedicated video on this once I found out the answer. It does look good. And I do know that if you have a color chart that basically allows you to get a color palette and you can work with that and you can make your image more great. So um, yeah, stay tuned for that. I'll probably make a dedicated video on that. Like I said, if you know how this works, let me know and I'll be sure to research it. And the map module has been enhanced in a number of ways because when importing a GPX, the trace can be displayed and location can be set using polygons and directly created from information reported by OpenStreetMap. And as a reminder, all locations create tags automatically for images placed into the area. And then the basic adjustments module, which was a great module, it's, it's no longer here. You see, it's gone. It had the exposure, it had the contrast, it had the saturation but it's been replaced with the quick access panel, which can be used to group controls from multiple different modules in one place. Currently only non-graphical controls, so sliders, combo boxes, etc., can be used. Now there are other uh, features and changes that have been made. One of them is that in the dark room, you can export your image straight away. Before you had to edit your image. Uh, let's get rid of this one. You had to edit your image, go to light table, make sure your image was selected, go to export, and then export your image. You don't have to anymore. Once you're done with the image, just use this one on the left side of dark table, and then your image will be exported. Now the contrast equalizer module, it's got a slider. So it's got this mix slider and the mix control in the contrast equalizer module is now retained as a module parameter. So that means that no data is lost when using that slider and you can always change the mix later. 
So let's say you want a preset. So let's go with denoise and sharpen. You can change the mix slider and it still works. And it means that no data is lost. So I guess that's a good thing. And then other modules have been deprecated as well. So the basic adjustments module has been replaced by the new quick access panel. Like I said before, the vibrance module has been replaced by the vibrance module in the color balance or the uh, color balance RGB one. So let's open that one up, go to global vibrance and then increase it. And you will see that the colors are more lively. Now the spot removal module has re been replaced by the retouch module. Uh, you can use that to clone as well. And personally, I always thought that the retouch module was way, way better than the spot removal module. So I'm not going to miss it. And the defringe module has been replaced by a new chromatic aberrations module because the old module has been renamed to raw chromatic aberrations. So when you're in Darktable, you've got two different workflows. And let me show you which ones. We've got the display referred and we've got the scene referred. And if you go to settings, you can change this as well. But as I'm making this video, you see that Darktable is crashing. So that means there's a bug in 3.6. I haven't made a GitHub thing right now because this is actually happening while I'm filming this. I won't cut it out because now you see that I run into issues with the program as well. But all I need to do is just close it down and then restart it. And now we're back into Darktable. So I'll be sure to make a GitHub thing about this or at least post it on Facebook to ask people if uh, more people have this problem. So, but scene referred workflow is now the default. Uh, you can use the escape key. Uh, in the slideshow. So if you go to slideshow over here, uh, it will show you a slideshow of your images and you can just hit escape and then it will end by itself. And another thing that you can do is if you go to the darkroom menu again, uh, you can now control click on here and that will automatically open up this manage module layouts. So you can either select it manually, go to manage presets or just control click and then we've got this. So you've got a favorites one, but you can use all of these as well. So display referred, scene referred as well. It gives you different ones. So I'm going to select this one because that's the one that I've been using before. The whole UI is starting to come together right now because I've been working with Darktable for quite some time. And it's very cool to see that everything becomes a lot more easier over time. So they're doing a great, great job. The color of the scopes view have been worked over with new CSS coding. So that's great as well. It's just touching up the entire experience a little bit. And many graphs can be resized. So if we have the filmic one, you see that we now have a graph over here, but you can actually increase or decrease this by holding control and then zooming to or first scrolling towards you and scrolling away from you. So that increases or decreases the size of the chart. Same goes for other modules. So let's say I want the other RGB one. So the RGB levels, like I said, control scrolling towards me and away from me changes how this looks. And that's great because sometimes it's very tiny because it's, it's made with a specific pixel size in mind. So if you're working on a 4K monitor or a full HD monitor, you can change it accordingly. So that's a great thing as well. Now, one other thing is that the preliminary work towards full support for CR3 has begun. It's one of the questions that's been asked a lot because I've had a lot of questions on my channel asking, hey, can Darktable work with CR3, which, is, which comes from the uh, Canon R5 or R6? It can't just yet. They are working on it. And next week, I'm going to show you how to work with CR3 photos in Darktable. So stay tuned for that. And I'll be sure to teach you how you can do that in the meantime. And another thing you can do is you can delete modules by going to the module group, selecting the right mouse button, and then click it. And you see that it's now gone from this list. But you can add this as well. So I just removed the Astro Photo Denoise. Now I clicked it again. And you see that it's back in here. So uh, right mouse button, click it, it will delete it. And if you want to have it back, just click underneath Add Module, and it will be added to this menu and here are all the available modules to choose from. So that's a great thing to speed up your workflow as well, because some people just have a particular style. They've got several modules that they always use. I'm one of those people. And sometimes when it works, it works. When it fits, it fits. So you just need a specific number of modules and a specific type of modules to edit your images. And this is a great way to 
clean your workflow, as I call it. Other than that, there have been a lot of bug fixes. I'll be sure to put a link in the description down below of all the changes made to Darktable 3.6. And that's it. I hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comment section down below. If you've got anything to add, I'd love to hear it as well. My name is Rico Richardson, and until next time, doei!